was hired to do a news block. I, I did the morning news block where you sit and read news for four hours at a, at a time. News talk radio was relatively new uh, in 1971, especially in the Nashville area, uh, but relatively new all over the country. So I spent a year doing that, and then the station changed formats to rock and roll, of all things, from talk radio to rock and roll on, on the AM station. And uh, I became music director for, for that AM station, and I, and I did an MOR show on WLAC-FM playing Madhavani and Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett and a lot of instrumentals and so forth. But I started writing a little bit after I'd been in town for a couple of years. And I, I, during the rock and roll days, I worked with a guy who knew everybody in town. He'd been here longer than I had. He knew all the people on Music Row. And so I started writing and he could pick up the phone and get me an appointment with whomever I needed to pitch those songs to. And of course I was doing my own demos which I recorded in the production room of the radio station. Guitar voice, just a very simple demo. They never wanted the songs when I would pitch them, but they always wanted to know who was singing. And after a few years of that, we finally had the, the first offer to record. I ended up recording for what was then ABC Records. Had our first hit with Rose Colored Glasses, which is a song I wrote along with a friend of mine at the radio station. And uh, that, that song helped get me that first recording contract. Let's talk about that song. Okay. What inspired you? I was in a relationship that was not working out to my satisfaction. And so uh, the idea was born of that failed relationship. And it started, when I started writing it, I, I called it Love Colored Glasses. And then I thought of the old catchphrase, Rose Colored Glasses, and changed it promptly to that. And I wrote the first two verses in the chorus of the song played what I had of it for my friend who was a newsman at the station. His uh, name was George Baber. And uh, he, he got all excited about it. I thought I was through with it after two verses. He started writing what we turned into the third verse, which gives one some hope that this relationship might turn around and work out. It's one of my favorite songs. Well, thank you very much. I, it has become a standard, and of course it is our signature song. And uh, I don't do it every opera performance, but I do it at every, obviously, every live show we do on the road. So after Rose Colored Glasses, mm -hmm. what was next? Well, the next, uh, Rose Colored Glasses, although our most popular uh, song, stopped at seven on the national charts. That's as high as it got. A lot of people, most people think it was the number one record. And I love the story of this because it, it underlines how unimportant number one and how meaningless it can be. I've always said if every song could be as popular as Rose Colored Glasses and become a standard like it has, I'd take seven every time. But the record that followed Rose was a song called Lady Lay Down, which did go number one. The reason it went number one and Rose didn't is because Rose bicycled its way around the country from region to region. And to have a number one record, all the radio stations have to take a song up their individual charts at the same time. And that's what they did with the follow-up to Rose. All stations played it at the same time and it became a number one record. 